Time for another board game review, and this time we have the Attack on Titan deck building game. This was sent to me by Cryptozoic Entertainment, and it's designed by Matt Hyra. In the Attack on Titan deck building game, you take on the role of Eren, Mikasa, or one of their allies in an effort to save the last bastion of humanity from the Titan onslaught. While you begin armed with only your courage as the game progresses, you will add new, more powerful cards to your deck with the goal of defending the walls of your city from being destroyed. This is a cooperative game. You will need to work together to survive. In the end, you win or lose as a team. Now, this has the same system uh, as the DC deck building game, which I reviewed in episode 15. And also the Rick and Morty deck building game, which I reviewed in episode 53. It's the Cerberus system. Uh, and so if you want to like, look at the basics of the uh, Cerberus system, uh, go check out the DC deck building review, because I'm not going to go over that, because it's the same base system, but this game does add a lot of new features with movement and cooperative play. So I'll show you the differences, but if you want to like learn the basics, go check out the DC deck building review on episode 15. So the goal of the game is to defeat four arch enemy titans. Uh, so first off, we have to set up the main deck. Now I've taken the main deck and I've divided it into six piles here of about equal like 12, 13, 14 cards. Yes, Sophie? <coughs> Sophie wants to play. <coughs> now the arch enemy titans have different levels. As you can see, this is arch enemy one, this is arch enemy four. Uh, and so in order to set up the game first, you take each category of titan and put them in different uh, stacks, four, three, two and here's just the one the smiling titan so then you're going to take one of the car titans from the arch enemy four pile put it in here shuffle this up and then you put this on top of this pile and you do the same thing for these put with this shuffle them to here i'm not going to actually shuffle it but you would shuffle it and put it on here take this shuffle them to here and take this pile and sh put this guy in here shuffle it up and put it on top then you take this pile and put it on top. I know, really, really exciting stuff, but the reason why I'm showing you this is it's gonna come up later in my review of the game. But this way, kind of pandemic style, it makes sure that the arch enemy titans are spread out through the deck, uh, so that uh, the first one will be near the top and the arch enemy four one, and you don't know which one it'll be, it's randomly one of three for each, except the arch enemy one, and they're gonna be interspersed throughout the main deck. Each of you gets a hero. As you can see, they all have different powers, like Mikasa here. Your defense cards may be used to avoid an ambush against any target in this district or an adjacent district. Eren, you, uh, if you play a wound during your turn, plus two power and move two. Each time you defeat a titan, choose a hero. That hero draws a card. So each character, there's uh, eight characters, has their own special power. And uh, let's say we pick... Aaron and Mikasa, you also get their little stands. Each player starts with a starting deck of 10 cards. You have seven courage cards with plus one power. If you already know how to play the DC deck building game, which I told you to go watch that, then you already know what power is. It's the currency for the game. Uh, but here's a new thing, movement. And you have three thrust cards, move two. You'll shuffle these up and you'll each draw five cards. Over here, you have a Titans on Attack stack, a Wound stack, and a 3D gear stack. A 3D gear can be bought at any time. It's kind of like a kick uh, in the previous game, or the DC game. Uh, plus one power, and you may put it back on the stack to move to an additional plus one power. Wounds, I'll explain later, they're pretty tricky. Here are the five walls. Each wall represents a district, and they each have two HP or shield tokens on them. Uh, and your goal is to protect these walls from the Titans. What you'll do next is you'll take the uh, main deck and you'll start placing cards within the districts. If a Titan is placed during this setup, uh, you remove it from the game and ignore its ambush text. But otherwise, you're just putting cards in here. And as you can see, they all have different effects on them. Ooh. At the start of each round, you always take the main deck and add cards to the districts um, based on the number of players you have. Let's say we're playing with two players. You would take two cards from the main deck, uh, one, and you put them in each district. Then as a group, you choose the first player uh, for that round and you give them the round token. Uh, that chooses who goes first and then you go clockwise from there. And once everyone's done their turn, the round is over. When you add cards to the districts, you always add them so that they are equal. And if you have to decide between two districts, you always add to the farthest away from the castle. That's the main deck, is the castle. So if uh, for the next turn, you would put two cards here if nobody bought any cards. But let's say this card was bought. Uh, on the next turn, you would place a card here first and then put another card there to make uh, them as equal as possible. 
At the start of your turn, if you're not on the board, you may go on any inside space within the district. Uh, and there are different spaces, inside and outside. So let's say Aaron decides he's gonna start, I don't know, here. He then looks at his cards. He's got four courage cards and one thrust card. That means he has four currency to use to buy cards. Uh, and he has two movement. So let's say, with let's go over movement, he can move two spaces. So he can go one, two. And let's say he wants to buy this Krista Lens card. Uh, he would then put it in his discard pile like you do with any cards you gain in these games. You can also move to outside spaces. Like if there was a Titan on the outside of this district and he was here, he could go one, two, like that. So here's a key difference from the uh, usual DC deck building game engine is that instead of being able to buy any card at any time, you have to actually physically be on the space to buy the cards on that space. If I wanted either of these, I'd have to move to that space. Uh, so this becomes almost like a little board that you're moving around on. Now let's let's go over Titans. I'm just gonna put cards out until a Titan appears. Here we go, here's a Titan seven meter. Ambush, each hero in this district discards their hand and draws four cards. If no hero are in this district, add the top card to the main deck of this district. So let's say that um, Mikasa and Eren were both here. Uh, now, if this Titan is here, he ambushes them, and if they don't have a defense card, like for example, the one that, uh, let's say Aaron plays his Crystal Lens card as defense, like in the DC deck building game, you can use this to block an attack, uh, and then you would, he would get to draw two cards by discarding this card. But Mikasa, if she didn't have a defense card, then she would have to discard her hand and draw four cards. If no heroes were here, then we'd add the top card to the district. Now, Titans are nasty, and here, let's go over the end of round sort of phase. At the end of the round, each arch enemy Titan regenerates one HP per player. I'll go over that later. Uh, then we resolve any end of round Titan ongoings. If this guy had an ongoing effect, he would trigger it. Then, he's a standard Titan. Each standard Titan deals one damage to the wall. Bam! That shield is gone. If it was an arch enemy Titan, it would take two at once and completely destroy the wall with one hit. If I wanted to kill that Titan, I'd have to go uh, over to it. So let's say Mikasa, it's Mikasa's turn, and she's got uh, three courage and four movement. Uh, she could move over there with one space, and then use the three power to immediately kill the Titan. And the Titans in this game are just removed from the game as soon as they are beaten. They're not added to your deck. With three movement left, she could move back one and maybe, you know, center herself somewhere else that she wants. Maybe she wants to go here so that she can buy cards next turn. Something like that, but that's how you can kill the Titans. Very simple. But arch enemy Titans are much nastier. These are the big bosses of the game, and remember, to beat the entire game, you have to beat four of these. And this guy is the Smiling Titan. His ongoing effect is at the end of each round, each hero in this space must reveal a move card or gain a wound. Wounds are real nasty, I'll go over that in a second. And as you can see on here, not only does he have a cost, like most cards do to beat them, uh, but in this case, he has 13 HP. You actually have to deal damage to him first before you can even try to kill him. So let's fight this arch enemy Titan. Let's say on Aaron's turn, he has four movement and three power. So he moves, uh, let's say, one, two, three. Um, and then he decides to damage it. Uh, he would then do three damage to the Titan, like so. Now, in order to kill this Titan, you have to do 13 damage total to it. And damage is cumulative, but at the end of each round, this guy's gonna heal two HP because it's one HP per player. Some cards do only damage two certain Titans. So let's say Mikasa has this hand and she has three power and then she has the cannon, which is three power and five damage to each arch enemy Titan in this district. So if Mikasa was here, she could go one, two up to the Titan, uh, use six power to hit it and then five more power. Now the Titan has 13 damage on it and it's ready to kill. Now, if Eren and Mikasa were not able to beat this Titan and are still on this space, then at the end of this round, not only is this Titan going to heal 2 HP because there's two players, but now each of them has to reveal a move card or gain a wound, and that's really, that's really shitty. Let's go over what a wound is. A wound is a card where during your turn, you have to play wound cards before playing other cards. They're an ongoing card, which means they stay in front of you. And if you play or gain another wound, you die. Your character just straight up dies. At the start of your turn, you can discard a wound you control for your next turn. So these are really, really bad. I'll explain how you get these uh, later, but one way is through Titan ongoing effects. But let's pretend that there's 13 damage on it, and let's say Mikasa did it, and Eren still has a turn. Then Eren has a chance to kill it. To kill it, he's got to match the cost, which is at least six. 
Now, Aaron, this turn, has his, ooh, look at that. He's got his kill shot card, which if he shares a space with the Titan, it's plus seven power. So eight, nine, 10, he's got 11 power. That's more than enough. Now, he has a choice here. He has to decide how much power he's gonna use to fight this Titan. And the reason why that's important is that if he fails to beat the Titan, he loses all that power no matter what. Um, and I have to explain the next mechanic, which is when you fight an arch enemy Titan, not only do you have to match the cost, you have to pull a Titans on attack card. This is gonna add some kind of bonus to the Titan. And if you don't have enough power after this card's revealed, your attack completely fails. So let's say Aaron says, yep, I'm gonna do 11 power and let's see what happens. So this guy's got six costs. He has a 13 damage, so he's ready to be killed. And our card is eat, uh, destroy an ally you played this turn. Now, none of the cards were allies. So in this case, Aaron's attack is successful. He has killed the Titan and it's removed from the game and you're one step closer to winning. But even though he had five power left over he didn't use, all that power is gone because uh, you have to do that when you declare a kill. Now in this case he was lucky, but there are some really nasty cards in this game like smile, add five to the cost. So you, might, you wanna pledge as much power as you are willing to give because you really wanna make sure you kill that Titan. Because like I said before, this guy does two damage to a wall at the end of each round. And that's an instant destruction of a wall. Now that's pretty brutal, but there is a way to mitigate damage against the wall. Let's say that uh, Aaron and Mikasa were both on this space. And at the end of the round, the Smiling Titan is about to attack this wall. Both Aaron and Mikasa decide we're gonna take a wound each to block it. Because what you can do is for each damage you're blocking, you take a wound into your discard pile. So since they're both on the same space as this Titan, they could both take a wound and the wall would be protected. But if they draw two wounds on one turn or um, gain a wound on the same turn they won't control a wound, their character dies. If a wall is destroyed, you remove it from the game and you also destroy any cards that were in that district forever. Then you close up the gap and now you have four walls to protect. And this Titan doesn't stop. He actually just moves over to the next adjacent wall. So he's still there chomping away. Here's how you win the game. If you defeat all four arch enemy Titans that are in your castle, the game ends and your team wins. However, you lose immediately if one of the three following conditions is met. If you run out of walls, you're dead. If you run out of cards in the deck, basically meaning you can't add a card to a district, you're dead. And if three heroes die in a two to three player game, you're dead. If it's a four to five player game, if two heroes die, you're dead. When your hero dies, you place all wounds you control in your discard pile back on the wound stack, destroy all cards in your hand and any other cards you control, grab a new character, and uh, you start over. Uh, you keep your same deck and have a new character. There's some other stuff I'm not necessarily gonna go over the entire thing. Like for example, locations are cards that you can play on certain districts. Like this one would give you an extra wall token. Uh, heroes in this district may use this. Uh, you can also use an extra effect like pay two movement to move a Titan to this district. Uh, I'll just go over some of the other cards here. Here's a, here's a reel in. Move one and choose a hero in this district to draw a card and discard a card. Um, signal Flare, uh, it's a defense card, but it also can let each other hero move one space if they need extra movement. Uh, here's Berthold Hoover, he uh, move, lets you move two and it's a plus three power. Um, here's another location card, uh, heroes in this district may use this card anytime, time, uh, and also lets you discard a move card to avoid an ambush. Lots of different cards in the game, I'm not going to go through every single one, especially because if you've played the DC deck building game, you know what kind of cards there are. But there are some interesting cards up with movement and with locations that uh, make this selection of cards a little more interesting. But otherwise, that's pretty much the game. Just uh, Run around, kill those titans, make sure these guys uh, don't bite your walls too bad, and if you can kill all four of the big boys, you win. Alright, so if you've watched my reviews of the DC deck building game, the Rick and Morty deck building game, you know that I like the Cerberus engine a lot. It's simple, uh, but it's fun, and it's satisfying deck building. Um, but let's dive into the new mechanics. Thematically, the game is strong. Uh, the co-op is actually pretty satisfying and strategic. It really does matter, like, who goes first, especially because of the Arch Enemy Titans, like, HP system of, okay, well, if you can get the HP, or the damage at this point, then I can go in for the kill. Uh, and also the Titans damaging the wall, it always feels like a real threat. It really feels like an Attack on Titan game. My biggest problem with the game, though, is that the, dis the distribution of Titans in the deck, I'm not talking about Arch Enemy Titans, but regular Red Titans, 
can really affect how much of a chance you'll have at winning at all. Uh, if you're super unlucky, like we were in some playthroughs, you'll stand absolutely no chance from the start. Because each wall is only 2 HP, if you don't have any decent decks built up by the time your first arch enemy titan comes out, you are absolutely fucked. And if a ton of regular titans appear before the first arch enemy titan comes out, you'll be so busy just trying to get rid of them because each one bites a chunk out of your wall. You can take wounds, but wounds, if you don't have a big deck, wounds will murder you. So you just don't have time. And also, each titan that comes out is one less card added to the districts for you to buy. It, it feels a little too random in that way. Because the regular Titan cards are just shuffled into the main deck and then split up into piles, you have absolutely no idea if that first pile uh, is gonna have a ton of Titans or not. In one game we played, like the first couple turns, there was just Titan, 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 and we like basically lost instantly. Uh, in the most satisfying game that I played, there was a pretty long grace period where there were like barely any titans at all until and so we were able to build up our decks and then when the arch enemy titan came and the other titans started pouring in it was still really challenging but it was like fair and you know fun to play i feel like there should really be a guaranteed pile of cards at the start that don't have any titans like i guess maybe like shuffle the deck have the first, let's say, so cards be definitely, definitely guaranteed supply cards, uh, so that you have a chance to have some turns of just breathing room. Yes, at the beginning of the game, if you draw Titans for the first set, you remove them, but that's the only mitigating factor for what could otherwise be tons of Titans in the first 12 cards. So my overall opinion on the game is pretty mixed. I think the foundation of the game, the Cerberus engine, is still fun as usual. Uh, and I think the ideas and themes are really strong. Like it really, like a lot of thought was put into how, how to make this feel like an Attack on Titan game. And it, it execution wise, it's, it's a good idea, but there's too much luck in how the game can turn out based on Titan distribution. And I'm not just saying, oh, boo hoo, this game is too hard. Sometimes it's just unfair uh, because you can't do anything about these Titans just biting the walls. Either give the walls more HP, so that, you know, it's less of a bite in the ass if you have tons of titans, or guarantee that the first pile of cards won't have titans. Then you have, like, me, I don't know, a couple turns at least, where you can just at least buy some cards and prepare for titans. Because uh, otherwise, sometimes you just can't do anything after a certain point. I also am not a fan that the game essentially expects you to just kind of sacrifice most of the walls. It seems like, in my opinion, anyway, because, yeah, you can take wounds to block hits, but if your deck is small, you're super likely to draw wounds in succession and just die. Uh, instead, the more viable strategy seems to be just let two or three of the five walls get crumbled, and then once your decks are bigger, just then maybe take wounds. Um, but since you technically only need one wall left to win, the walls just feel like they're going to blow up as you build up your deck. It doesn't feel as thematic like you're trying to protect the whole city. It's like, eh, those first three walls, fuck them. Just let them get eaten, it doesn't matter. And that feels strange. If, for, to me, it feels like each wall should be like important like in the show. So like I said, maybe more HP for the walls or more, more of a, I don't know, a preparation period. Almost like, like in some board games, they have like two phases, where the first phase is like the preparation phase, where like you're kind of building up, like the, the that one Jaws game that like Target released had this, where the first phase of the game is like you go around the island and you, if you do well in that, then you get more shit for the second phase, which is actually fighting the shark. And I feel like this game needed something like that. Like, here's a phase where you can just prepare like training or something and get your cards ready so that bam second part titans come in you are, have a fighting chance it needs something like that because the chances of like having like 10 titans and like appear in a row is technically possible and that's not great so if you're a huge fan of attack on titan this is actually a pretty decent game but just be warned it is very hard uh, and if you're a fan of the cerberus system like i am this isn't bad, and I think the co-op nature is cool. I actually really like the co-op, but it's a little too difficult for reasons that I think, like I said, are kind of unfair, like the Titan distribution. If you can manage to get your decks going, it's pretty fun, um, but it's a little too unwieldy in its luck factor for Titans 
to make, have me fully recommend it. It's kind of a weaker entry, I think. Some interesting ideas, but for me, it wasn't executed completely perfectly. 